Hello, my name is Joshua Rudd with Rudd's Home Farm, and today I'm going to be planting some celery, and we're going to be making a new tray for the celery to be planted in. And let me, I'm gonna show you how I make my trays and how I plant, and uh, I'll walk you through everything I do. Come follow along. So first thing we're gonna use is our 10 by 20 tray. This, this right here is from Bootstrap Farmer, links in the description. Um, so you need a 10 by 20 tray, nice tray, nice and sturdy. Then you need this, this cover here. This is where your net pots go into, but most of the time you don't use every net pot. So you need to cover up the ones you don't use to prevent algae growth. So with that, we're going to be using this mylar, reflective mylar, which also helps growth by reflecting the light back into the plants for more absorption. And it also covers up the holes you're not using. And it's very durable and waterproof. So I use that and here is our net pots where we'll be planting the celery. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll show you with all these tools how I make it. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and cut the outline of your, of your mylar strip that you're going to be placing over the tray. And so we're gonna go ahead and use this as a template and just cut a basic around here with a, something under here. Okay, more stuff under here than I thought. Okay, let's try that again. So you just cut around the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. What I like about planting stuff is nothing really has to be exact and perfect and on point. It's, if it is, then it's pretty much cause you know, that's the way you want to look. But the plants really don't know the difference. So I looked at the celery packet and the celery packet said you needed to be about six inches apart. And so that's about every other hole needs to have a cut in it for a plant to go because that's about roughly six inches in between two each. Um, so I'm gonna cut every other hole. And then I'm also gonna cut every other row. And I'm gonna alternate so you get the maximum amount of space in between each plant, yet maximize the amount of space used. So, watch with me as I do it. see it's not really perfect but that's okay so you just go ahead and you place this on top of the, the tray it's got the spacing you want you put it on top of the tray the 10 by 20 tray all the stuff links in the description feel free to go ahead and take your pick and then you just go ahead and you put your net pots in there these are two inch net pots this is why not cutting is very perfectly is very important because it's just the net pots are going to cover any mistakes that you make. Wouldn't even know the difference. And there you go. And there you have it. There's your uh, 10 by 20 tray ready to have celery be planted. That's how I make my tray. There's a uh, algae. You don't have to worry about algae getting in there. Every time you water it, you just lift it up and with like a cup or something, uh, and then you just pour it, pour your solution in there, you put it back down, you're ready to rock again. So that's how I do it. So now I'm gonna get ready to plant my celery. I haven't tried celery indoors, so let's experiment together. So this tray holds eight celery, according to the spacing on the seed packet. So I've counted out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rock wools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and dip them in my hydroponic solution. If you wanna know how to make hydroponic solution, the link will be in the description on that video. But we just take it over here, we just dip the whole thing in there, and then just soak it up. Just dip the whole thing in there. Okay, and then you just 
put each of them in your little plugs, in your net pots. They're all corrugated, so they pop off really easily. And you just slam them in there. Kind of push them in there to make sure they're down because you're gonna be putting clay pebbles on top of it. Okay. Everything's pushed in, everything's good. Now it's time for seeds. So I just usually just sprinkle a bunch of seeds in there. Some people care about thinning out and only making sure a certain number of plants go in there or whatnot, whatever. But uh, cool thing about farming is that nothing has to be precise. So I just make sure a couple seeds go in there, pop them out, a couple seeds go in there, a couple seeds go in there, nothing. Not counting or anything. You could thin them out later if you really want to, but in my experience, if you let all the plants grow to maturity, usually the stronger ones will just automatically kind of win and shade out the other ones, the weaker ones, and the weaker ones will die. And you don't have to do no pruning at all. Maybe that one could have a little bit more, just to make sure. I like to overkill stuff, because why not? There you go. Easy as that. You don't have to like push it in or nothing. You just gently place it on top. Maybe if you want, you could spread out the seeds a little bit evenly. There you go. Spread them out a little bit evenly if you really want to. Just stick your finger in there and move them around a little bit. And that's it. That's all it takes. So our next thing we want to do is we're going to put our clay pebbles on there. This covers the uh, wet rock wool. So algae won't grow, This algae is very nasty. It's very nasty. It's one of the only pests you have to worry about. Um, I, did, I grew with uh, potted plants indoors, and then the gnats were just unbelievable how many gnats and how fast they reproduced and how much, you know, gnat paper, fly paper, you know, spraying them with hydrogen peroxide. Nothing really got rid of the gnats completely so i really got tired of dealing with all these nasty gnats and so i decided to grow hydroponically and pretty much algae is our only problem in hydroponics which is really cool <laughs> Next, we're going to pour our hydroponic solution underneath with this jar here. Fortunately, I can't do it all with one hand, so I will be back after I just pour this, lift it up and pour it in there, real simple, at, with your hydro, hydroponic solution. This is just not water. With seedlings and with germination, you really could just use water. Um, you really don't need to use hydroponic solution until the plant is about, has germinated and is about one to two weeks old. So if you don't have any hydroponic solution or if you don't want to mix any yet, you can just use regular water for the first couple weeks and they'll be just fine. But since I already have it ready and this stuff has a shelf life of maybe a couple of weeks before it starts, you know, going bad, I go ahead and use it if I have it. So I only filled it up to uh, where the water is maybe at this little line here at most. You don't want to fill it up all the way to the top because you'll drown out any seedlings. Make sure that plants, the plant roots need both water and oxygen. Uh, as a final touch, for the first few days, you can put this dome on here. Since you're growing hydroponically, everything has a lot better chance and really doesn't need this. But if, you, uh, if you're having difficult with plants or something, you could always put this humidity dome on there for the first few days just to give the plants a little bit more human environment to grow and grow faster, grow better. Once again, it's optional. I'm gonna leave it on there this time for celery and uh, just leave it on there for a few days until you see some germination, a few inches of growth, and then take it off. Thank you for joining me. If you like what you see, go ahead and comment below, like, subscribe. I got lots more videos, lots more things to go through. Stay tuned, have a great day. Bye-bye.